You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to wander around. Hey, we all know that we're going down, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your fantastic host, JC. With me today is the OK Kiki. You know what you did. I keep fucking trying to give you promotions. And every week, every fucking week, it's like you just slap it in my face. with a, Like a big old dick. It's like you just take a big giant dick and slap it in my face. And I have to demote you again. <sighs> you know what you did. And there's there's been a whole lot of talk about dick slapping lately. And I just, <laughs> I'm not exactly how to sure how to respond to any of it um, well stop slapping me in the face with a dick would be step one. First of all i'm sure our listeners are probably curious as to whose dick i'm using to slap you in the face with multiple people i am also curious because i don't recall having my hands on anyone's dick in a very long long time i'm so sorry i know that's what happens when you get married and have a four-year-old just right away. Just boom, he's four. You're married and done. <laughs> Fuck, he came out of me four. God damn it. You know, actually, life would have been a lot easier if he had come out of me at the age of four. I mean, not really, because he's a lot larger now than he was. I'd be wrecked, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is taking a very weird turn. turn. <laughs> Let's cut most of that out. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> I like that you left a note up there that says that JC likes blue and also likes dicks in his face. That's probably where we're getting a lot of the slap in the dick stuff. Maybe. And and then you said that it was somewhat correct. Yeah, I like responding to my own notes. I know. I was going to say, that's your own handwriting on our message board to ourselves. Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, oh, so we do have something kind of cool to announce. I made a promise that you guys would start getting some bonus episodes real little things like 15, 10 minutes long. And those are going to be based on our map. And we did the United States first. It not should be because, first. Not because we're being like nationalists. I mean, one of us isn't. Right. I'm not. Um, so, <laughs> but 90% of our listeners, no surprise, are uh, from the U.S. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to pay a little homage to all of you wonderful listeners by doing a quick little 15 or 10 minute uh, spooky bite i'm gonna call it it's like little spooky bites yum 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 it's all i don't food. like it's it. all food related do See? we we're doing slices of pennsylvania we're gonna feed you bites of uh, spookiness from other states do that are you is that name in stone it's done it's a done deal oh finished yeah God i'm already i'm already doing i'm already doing merchandising for that <laughs> okay <laughs> you get no say none if i'm the one doing the editing you don't get to say what it is well okay do you have a better idea than spooky no bites? i don't yeah okay <laughs> shut the fuck up that's what i thought you sit there you shut the fuck up <laughs> i love you <laughs> anyway um yeah so for now because he's sitting here disapprovingly looking at me with his arms folded like he's to be fair so that's mad, normal right <laughs> This is normal stance, right? Just disapproval. Constant, constant, constant disapproval. disapproval. Um, anyway, it's going to be sco- spooky bites, and we're going to start with the states, and then those will be at a bonus, um, hopefully, every week, actually. We'll probably drop those, like, on the weekend for a little bit of added fun, because you guys seem to miss us during the week, but we're so busy. So these these things are only going to be about, like, 10 minutes long, maybe, at the most. If you get more than 10 minutes, hey, you're we're doing good. Now, I don't know why, but when I said that you were looking at me like for arms folded disapprovingly and you started laughing, it sort of reminded me of Henry Sabrowski. And I don't know if you've seen the effing bingo that's out for last podcast. <laughs> no, I have not followed <laughs> it's them absolutely amazing. all year. What? Yeah, that's... I just I've been doing I've been listening to other podcasts and 
so focus. have I. I've been spending my time doing other things and stuff. Mm -hmm. and Stuff and junk. Yeah, so I haven't things listened to things. them. I'm kind of letting them build up again, and then I'm just going to binge it, because I'm a binger. I understand, but I couldn't. Um, they did Heaven's Gate, a three-part yeah. series, which, by the way, guys, absolutely amazing, as usual. And I like they like going back, because they'd done that one, like, ages ago. Like, you know, yeah, like, five I'd years like, ago. Yeah, well, probably Maybe longer than 10. that. Mm -hmm. Because that was in their first 50 yeah, episodes. Look, I, they I have think. so many episodes, I don't know. I just listened to, like, all of them. So, yeah, really good three-parter. And then while that was going on, somebody started, like, the bingo. If you go on their Instagram, you'll see it. So there's one for Henry. There's one for Marcus. And, oh, my God, I was – and obviously one for Ben. But the first one that I saw was Ben's, and then they made – it seems like they made the Marcus and Henry later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Marcus is like when he mentions dirt, digging <laughs> in <the> dirt <laughs> or bones. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God. Or he defends the position of like a cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> I think once they're done <laughs> with the podcast. Doing, which he was doing in the Heaven's Gate one. And it was killing me because they were all like, are we going to need to help you? <laughs> I think he, he of the three, I think is most likely to actually start a cult that's going to be like <laughs> long term successful. Henry could start one, but it's going to like it's gonna it's it's gonna be a quick burn. Like it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be start and it's gonna be over real quick. I love all three of them. Ben's Ben's never gonna start a cult. Unless it's like a puppy cult, because he <laughs> just does say, love them dogs. He won't start the cult. It's gonna be it's gonna be Puffin. Puffin. Puffin's gonna start the cult. The cult of Puffin. I'm all about it. You I'm know, it even member. has a catchy name. Cult, Doesn't, of cult of Puffin. We said it here first. Hashtag cult of puffin. Hell yeah. yeah. Ben, we love you. Um, we actually would love your dog more, but I who mean, doesn't? Oh my god, that yeah. dog is like literally so the cutest cute. effing dog and I've ever it's seen. It's funny because like he's a giant of a person and he has a tiny little dog. So I have a little rant. Before we get into today's subject. Oh crap. I have a little rant. So you know what really musters my monster? What? Is when like people use, when people say that a demon is doing poltergeist activity. I don't like it. Like, you have a demonic haunting. It's different than a poltergeist. People need to stick to the definition. Let's be clear about what we're fucking talking about. Can demons and poltergeists and other such things share certain activities? Yes. Both demons and poltergeists can move shit around. But if you're being haunted by a demon, it's much different than having a poltergeist in your place poltergeists are just balled up energy that's taking form usually by moving things in weird ways demons if we go with the christian sense are powerful negative entities that are there to ultimately pending some factors try to get you to kill yourself try to get you to harm others like, they want you to do a very heinous activity or crime. Like, like they want you to do something really bad because that's what gets them off. Who fucking knows why, but that's what does it for them. And they want you to do something terrible. So they're there to fuck with you until you do that terrible thing. Now, I don't necessarily believe in demons, I'm not going to say the Christian sense. Mm. But if, like, let's just say for semantic sake that that's what we're calling them. Yeah. For me, they would just be maybe like, I had this, not to like digress too far, but I did have this exact conversation with someone else who is heathen in that using the word demon then conjures up the idea of, of, the, of Christianity being involved. Like that's what they've labeled them. And so maybe for me, it would be like looking at them as if they're just ancient entities maybe they've just been here for a really long time they could have been a living breathing person at one point and they've just been stuck here for so long that they've become this other thing yeah and that's when i agree that you encounter something like that and that is usually it's bored to me it's like it's been here forever so it wants to find something to do so it's gonna fuck with you it's gonna yeah. like just trick you and be 
an asshole. But yeah, I just, you know. What prompted this rant? Did you watch a TV show? Did you I not think you have to name to, it? But you know. I don't, I'm not going to list them. But I was listening to another podcast and they tell stories. And it this happens all the time. Like all the fucking time. Be clear with what you're saying and talking about. Especially if you're going to try and be an informational podcast about the paranormal and spooky shit. Well, this is actually prompting me to consider us doing the one thing that we were just talking about a little while ago off <laughs> off camera that you and I never did a podcast where we talk about what ghosts are just the definition of certain things and how we are viewing them yeah so maybe we should do that too like just to lay it all out there we could even have it like as a side thing like down the road here but i feel like maybe we should talk about it no yeah, no that's fine because I'm, I'm we haven't really talked about it. and for me i i've been doing research on ghosts in throughout history okay okay so all right guys we're gonna take a break for our sponsor and when we come back our peculiar pa episode the topic that you the listeners picked for this time and i have to say great choice guys it is grip the raven welcome back spoosters so what is the difference jc between a raven and a crow ravens are larger and i think more intelligent meh about the same oh the okay same. that's correct very good yay <laughs> you get a gold star cool where or a when? ghost i'm gonna give you like little stickers of ghosts i would love stickers if i could get a sticker board set up for every time i answer a question right i might actually start doing research on things <laughs> oh my god dude let's do it <laughs> i'm a five-year-old child <laughs> in the spare, my spare time new mission new mission spooky progress report for jc yay with stickers and everything yay okay so you're right. That is one of the differences. Um, crows travel in groups called murders. And ravens travel in pairs. Ravens are much larger. They're about the size of a red-tailed hawk. And ravens also have a very different sound. They do more of a low grunking type sound than that distinctive call call of a crow. I mean, I'm telling you guys all this because there's always that issue. People have a really hard time picking out what the difference between a raven and a crow is. All of the birds are highly intelligent and have become famous for remembering people who are nice to them and also those who are not so nice. You know, I remember reading a story of people who were doing like a, a group of scientists that were doing studies on raven eggs or whatever, and they'd have to wear masks that would change to go and get the eggs from the raven nest because the ravens would remember the mask and then attack or if the like the scientist or student whoever the fuck when they were just trying to leave the office the ravens would be like that motherfucker got my egg and attack them and ravens are large birds um and can fuck your day up like yeah, like I said, they're about the size of a red-tailed hawk, so you don't really want to mess with them. They're not dumb. They, um, I also read that they, like, they'll give presents to people who feed them. So, yeah. Yep. That, and they remember them being nice to them. That was the whole, yeah. So then, then they just keep bringing the one girl, she just, she got such a load of stuff, it was great. Our listeners who enjoy bird watching will probably already know this, but around here we have blue jays. And jays are part of the family Corvidae. They are really large birds. They It's funny how they kind of, from very you're seeing them from very far away. They're almost the same size as, as a freaking hawk. And they sound like a hawk, too. If they're, they're the ones that have that really noisy like, eh, eh, sound. Kind of like a crow. Just a little aside there, because I do I love my blue, my blue jays. Take good care of them. So... Now you know the difference between a raven and a crow. And now we're going to talk about grip. And this actual story... I feel about, like you should get a grip oh on Grip the God. Raven. Let's <sighs> fucking shoot me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so grip, the grip story is on the short side. So I'm going to include a couple of other raven stories just for fun. And uh, JC, so when you think of ravens... Is there anything in particular that comes to your mind? Like, is there like the quintessential raven story that comes to mind for you? You mean like the the one from Edgar Allan Poe? Did it? Is that 
Is that what comes to your mind it's, when you think of ravens? Well, there's that. There's, you know, in Norse mythology, Odin had two ravens that did his scouting for him. And they were his eyes and ears and spies. Because uh, ravens can also speak. That was words. Hugin and Munin. Yeah, sure. If that's what their names are, Representative of thought and memory, respectively. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, good job. Good job, Jesse. You get another ghost today. Another ghost star. Yay! Ghost stars! <laughs> also called black holes, because when a star dies... Oh, Lord. And well, We it, know a science podcast. See, I would argue that the paranormal is a type of science. It's a pseudoscience, like, technically. I mean, I would argue sure. that it should be an actual science. Uh, I would, too, in a way. Yeah, sure. Because there's sh- creepy shit going on in the world that mainstream science just says, nah, that ain't real. What? No, but but it was. Nah, that just your eyes playing tricks on you. No, I, I saw a shadow person. Ah, uh, nah, on. it was just a, a light thing. No, I looked Let me directly get a at it for 10 minutes. Let go on a rant again. Hold on. <laughs> it's my turn. I have a pillow that says... 31 on it for it's halloween pillow this is 31st how does that deal with mainstream science i'm talking about me going to sleep right now (laughs) oh okay 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 yeah just okay bring it back grip grip was yeah you should have said jc get a grip jc get a grip on the situation ah thanks kiki (laughs) so grip was charles dickens beloved pet raven he was a mischievous creature with an impressive vocabulary. As you just said, they do talk. They can learn how to talk and say things. Dickens was very fond of Grip to the point where he made the bird a character in the novel Barnaby Rudge, which uh, personally I've never read. Not a huge fan of Dickens. Sorry. Just, mm, yeah. Unfortunately. You're, you're not a fan of I'm not Dickens? a fan of Dick. Dickens. Dickens. <laughs> God, if we don't get the toilet humor in, it just doesn't feel like a regular podcast, does it? Dickens. <laughs> yeah, I'm much more a fan of dick outs. <laughs> and then in and then out again. <laughs> I've killed JC. JC's dead in the corner. Okay, so anyway. Unfortunately, Grip suddenly died one night in 1841. This is possibly due to his old habit of eating paint. Who lets their bird, who lets any of their pets just eat paint? I will give him this. He probably scolded him multiple times not to eat paint. And then he just did it anyway, because he's a bird. He's an animal. Like, they just sometimes are just stupid. Like, why are you doing that? Don't eat that. Like, why does my cat you know like to eat i don't know like toilet paper i he's just weird dickens mourned him obviously fondly writing to a friend about how he spent his last moments saying his favorite phrase to her which was i'm not really sure how to say it i think it's halloa old girl or halloa old girl or maybe he was just saying hello in english (laughs) i'm just kind of confused about that writing And how he'd bother his children by biting them. So that's really funny. Like, he has this giant freaking raven in the house. And it's, like, running around, like, biting his kids. And he's all like, ha, 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 that's so funny. He must have been a blast to be a dad, right? Rather than burying or cremating him, Charles Dickens had him taxidermied. And kept him mounted in his home until his own death. Grip currently resides in the Philadelphia Free Library. Which is why we're talking about him. So he wound up here. Um, it's kind of wait one second is the whole library free because if so i claim it it's now mine and it's no longer free there's a charge thank you jc's very expensive bookstore thank you (laughs) (laughs) home of grip the raven (laughs) that's what you're gonna call your yeah we're gonna own a bookstore one day and that's what's gonna be called jc's very expensive bookstore well, I can't be Philadelphia Free Library. That was already taken. And I'm in here for a profit. Okay? Yeah, but apparently that's a now defunct business. So we could just co-op that name and then it'd be kind of ironic. Yeah. It's Philadelphia's free, non-free library. <laughs> Bookstore. Bookstore. Yeah, it's not even uh, a library anymore. Right. We don't, we don't have right. a return policy. Get, so get Phil- your shit. Get the, the fuck Phil- out. It's the Philadelphia's non-free, no longer a library, library bookstore. Yeah. There we go. That's the title. Got it. Done. <sighs> Deal. Okay, so here's where 
Edgar Allan Poe comes in, though, because, see, you were talking about the Raven. Nevermore. Poe was a, a literary critic when Barnaby Rudge came out, and he was one of the many people who reviewed the novel. One complaint <laughs> of his was that the pet raven in the story wasn't featured enough. So what does he do? Writes a whole poem about the damn thing. <laughs> Uh, this critique, the fact that Poe and Dickens formed a friendship and the similarities between some of the lines of the Raven and Barnaby Rudge are reasons why scholars believe that Grip was definitely Poe's inspiration for his poem. So there you go, guys. That's that's Grip the Raven. Very sweet. And you can go visit him at the Philadelphia Free Library, which is currently the Philadelphia Free Library until JC turns it into his very expensive bookstore of non-free books. The unlibrary. I'm just going to call it J until JC turns it into the unlibrary. So I do have a couple of other famous Raven stories, and both of them, by just pure happenstance, are from Rome. There is Marcus Valerius Corbus, one of my favorite dudes. I mean, he's kind of an asshole, but I mean, you know, he was a member of uh, the patrician Gens Valeria, so Gens Valeria being his family name. Valerius first came to be prominent during 349 BCE when he served as a military tribune under Lucius Furius Camillus. Lots of really cool names here. But the best part of this is that he's in a campaign against the Gauls in northern Italy. And the legend goes, prior to one battle, a gigantic Gallic warrior challenged any Roman to single combat, and Valerius, who asked for and gained the consul's permission, accepted. As they approached each other, a raven settled on Valerius's helmet, and it distracted the enemy's attention by flying at his face and allowing Valerius to kill the Gaul. The two armies then fought, resulting in the Gallic forces being routed, and in the end, decisive victory for the Romans. As a reward for his courage, Valerius was apparently given a gift of 10 oxen and a golden crown, and he was eventually given the Agnomen Corvus, which we probably have figured out by now that in Latin means raven. He was given the raven? He was given the title of raven. Oh, okay. So Marcus Valerius Corvus. Oh, nice. Right? Fucking awesome. Like, can you imagine having like a, a pet raven who... Then is like being a ranger in D and D, and fucking come at your yeah. face and like, yeah, really, yeah, it's like that. Yeah, he was like, hold, you know what? I got this, guys, hold, guys, guys, I got this. Hold my bird seed. Go, go, fucking get him, buddy. <laughs> go for the eyes, buddy. <laughs> yeah, and he did. Yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. You got a beak, you go for the eyes. Like I want to see that in a movie. I want to see that in a movie. I want to see Marcus Valerius Corvus in a damn movie. Although, who knows, it prob <laughs> he probably was in one by now, and I just... And there's so many Roman movies. Uh, yeah, so many Roman movies. Oh, my God. So many It's like about they Romans. dominated culture for... A long time. Several hundred <laughs> years. Okay, so the next one is also in Roman. This is really my favorite bird story in general. So during the reign of Tiberius, there was a brood of ravens that had bred on top of the Temple of Castor and happened to fly into a shoemaker's shop that stood opposite of that temple. The short version of this is that each day, the bird would salute Tiberius and then Caesars, Germanicus, and Drusus, after which it would proceed to greet the Roman populace as they passed. So we're talking about how smart ravens are. It would remember people's names and it got to mimic the names back, right? Yeah. And then it would return to the shop. So for several years, it w it kept doing this and would have the attendance of every single day of, of going and meeting Tiberius and Germanicus and Drusus and then everybody else that came past. But there was another shoemaker shop in the same neighborhood. And this raven apparently, um, well, the part of the legend is that it like pooped on this guy's shoes <laughs> and he got really mad and he killed the bird. There was an absolute rage in Rome when they found out that this guy killed the bird. And this is actually written by Pliny, the elder, in one of his books. So this is all documented. This guy 
was in so much trouble, he had to leave Rome. They were so angry about it. They had a funeral for the bird. <laughs> the body was placed upon a litter that was carried upon the shoulder of two Ethiopians, proceeded by a piper, born to a pile with garlands of every size and description. And this is Pliny saying this. The pile was erected on the right-hand side of the Appian Way at the second milestone from the city. So basically, they honored this this bird with the same kind of funerary rites that they would have the emperor himself, right? And this this guy who left the city, they found him and they fucking murdered him. Good. And Pliny says that no one had avenged for the death of Scipio, right, which had happened during the, the, the war with Carthage. No one had, you know, gone after that guy. But they sure as hell went after the fucking guy who killed the bird. <laughs> you don't fuck with animals. Don't fuck with ravens. Yeah, don't fuck with cats, right? We were just talking about that in one of the other episodes, I think, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, about watching I that movie. Like I feel like we did cover that at some point because it's, well, it's worth watching in case we didn't mention it before. But yeah, it just goes along those same lines. It cracks me up where Pliny's like, yeah, you guys didn't even like go after the guy who murdered one of our own people. But you went after the guy that yeah, the murdered the damn bird. <laughs> yeah, you don't fuck with animals. That is that is a key thing. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. And our featured music today comes from a band called Duvolt. And they are from Tuscany, Italy. And it's sort of a shame they officially broke up in 2015. They uh, were kind of cryptic about it. They said, we're continuing to make music in secret projects with different aliases. And I kind of love that about them. So this song comes from their 2012 album, Union of Opposites. And that can be found at Free Music Archive or on Bandcamp. And the song is called Dance with Ghosts. Thank you so much for listening today spooksters and we're talking about self-control and how my keto diet's going just in case anybody gives a holy fuck about it two pounds down in one week that's about good that's average i don't want to be losing more than that anyway because then it's bad for you so i ate a cookie I'm gonna it was keep a my peanut thoughts butter and opinions cookie. about the keto diet and other diets to myself he said that it's bad for my health well <laughs> that's what i have to say i ate a cookie i had it's just about self-control I just don't eat the entire box of cookies. I just monitor my cookie intake. And the only reason I'm talking about all these goddamn cookies is because it is Girl Scout cookie season. And I'm surrounded by Girl Scout cookies. Literally. Piled boxes. And going to pick up cookies for deliveries because it's 
my nieces. And I used to be a Girl Scout, which is why when I read when I started do, redoing our artwork for Patreon, I've created almost like little badges for everybody to earn. So I think they're going to be cute when they're finished. And if you want to join the squad, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Mission Spooky. We have tiers at the one and two dollar levels. One single buck gets you our undying gratitude. And a and shout, shout out. out. God damn it. I was going to finish the whole fucking thing. I wasn't God counting on it. it. I forgot that you have gold ghost stars today. Go for it. Okay. Should I start at the undying gratitude or where do you want me to go? Start from. Just say. And a shout out on the podcast episodes. You know. If we ever get anybody who signs up, then JC will. I will. I will say your names on this here podcast thing. He may even come up with something clever to make fun of you. For I him. doubt it. I'm not a very. Oh, wait. I'm amazingly clever. <laughs> I was going to say, I was giving you a compliment. Take it. So don't run too far. Um, Rocking our brand new logo. We already talked about that last week. I had to learn how to use Inkscape. I'm just going to pat myself on the back here for a second, guys, because I don't really do it very often. That fucking logo. I sent in for our stickers, right? So we could get a few stickers that so we know what it's going to look like. And of course, I kind of knew that the original it was cute, but it wasn't going to work, right? So I, I'm, I get the thing back, like, hey, can you rework this? Which were very kind. So they were like, hey, if you make changes to it, it has to be vector, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, uh, yeah, I kind of knew that. Duh. Well, in order to do that, I had to use Inkscape because it's a better program than GIMP for this, right? I had a very limited time to do it. It's I had eight hours because they wanted the proof back. So in eight hours, I designed our new logo and learned a new program. And I did it because of youtube and because of logos by nick who's my shout out today because he's awesome thank cool. you logos by nick at you go to youtube so if you need any anything learning how to use gimp or inkscape go do it and then when you're done with that if you want to give us a spooky story you can email us and what are we looking for right now uh well you want to say what the email is or you no, no. go ahead and tell us what we're looking uh, we're for looking first. For stories about shadow people two weeks we'll give you two more weeks to get your stories in and you can send those stories to uh, mission spooky podcast at gmail dot gov com feel free to email us questions or comments on any of the previous episodes if you're a pennsylvania far eastern pennsylvania or delaware <laughs> band <laughs> far eastern pennsylvania currently known as new jersey but we're going to be taking it back and are you own your own music and you'd like to be featured on the plot pod <laughs> On the podcast, please feel free to contact us through mission spooky podcast at gmail.com. <sighs> or as I say through Instagram and Twitter, man, we are phoning this shit in today. I can find uh, you can I can find yeah, I can find our music anywhere because it's I know exactly where it is. You can find our musical guest songs on Spotify by typing in mission spooky and going to our profile. And then you can listen to all the things that we have on Spotify. Yes, as long as the people are on Spotify. If they're yeah. not, then we're going to send you to where their stuff is. Yeah, like today's episode. Exactly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, Mission Spooky. And you can follow us, please follow us on our Facebook page. JC rules that with an iron fist. Yeah, and you can share things too to Mission Spooky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And feel free to like, you know, comment about episodes on there and whatever you want to do. I'm pretty lenient. Yeah. Oh, but with what? an iron fist. I was going to say. With an iron fist of leniency. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. Just remember to be kind. Also, rate and review on Podchaser. And when I say don't forget to be kind, I kind of also mean be kind to other podcasters, too. You know, we're all doing this for basically nothing. <laughs> Most of us. Yeah. So, you know, we're doing this for fun. Taking us out again is Duvolt from Tuscany Italy with their song Dance with Ghosts and just remember guys stay spooky and don't die but if you do contact us we are currently accepting all messages written on and carved into potatoes sent to our address thank you 